What's up everyone? Welcome back to Diary of a New Producer, the weekly video series where we basically follow um, a new producer that is going from scratch to try to build a million dollar book. We call him Ian, Ke Ian Cognito. I'm Mike Salas's mentor. Let's get into this, folks. Hey, thanks for joining us. If you missed the previous six weeks, go check them out. Uh, there's a lot of different nuggets that we talk about each week. However, this week, what I'm going to jump into is four different things I pulled from my conversation with Ian. So this conversation was just yesterday. Again, we have about an hour long call once a week where we dive into a lot of different things, not just your numbers, right? It's much more than that. That's probably the smallest portion of things. So this week, there's four things I want to talk about. One is getting things across the finish line. Second thing is your hunger, how to demonstrate that to clients. Third, we'll talk about goal setting. And then fourth, uh, splits, right? Versus helping kind of a controversial topic sometimes in certain agencies. All right, so you got a deal, you got to get it across the finish line. What do you do? And why am I mentioning this? Because Ian's got a deal he's working on. He had the call with first meeting, did his research meeting. He's gathered a lot of good information. And we spent, we have an hour long call, right? We spent probably 35 minutes of that just talking about this specific deal. Why? Because in this industry, you only need to win maybe eight to 12 accounts a year if you're going after the right size accounts. And so when you get those opportunities, you don't get a ton of them, you wanna go all in on them, right? Think it through, brainstorm, pick other people's ideas. And this is critical because sometimes we get so trapped in our own tunnel and our way of seeing things. And yep, this is how, where if we bring in another perspective, it can really shift how we see things and what we plan on saying. So. For example, we talked a lot about in this particular deal is like, you know, and this leads into my next point is showing hunger, right? So how do you show hunger to a client and, and how do you talk about that without bashing the other agent? One of the big things that this buyer kept saying to Ian was, I just feel like my agent's complacent. He says this is all there is that's out there. So what I pulled out of that is like, okay, complacency, uh, fear that his agent really isn't doing his job and just that curiosity. So what we don't wanna do as an agent coming in there, just throw the agent under the bus, right? And say, hey, yup, this program sucks, because what if it doesn't, right? Ian's been reviewing his policies, and really it doesn't seem terrible, but there is some issues with service. There's some coverage ideas that seem to be missed, but pricing seems kind of at the, the baseline, right? Um, and you'll see that a lot, where there's really not a lot of fat in the program. And so when I was talking with Ian, I said, you know, obviously, you know, mention those things that, in those new ideas, but you got to be able to demonstrate your hunger throughout this conversation. And it doesn't mean you go bash someone, but it means you just drop it into the conversation. And you don't even need a bullet point on your PowerPoint, right? Or your presentation or your proposal. You don't have to make a bullet point, but you weave it into your conversation to demonstrate your hunger. So that could sound like, uh, you know, drop in this, you know, like, hey, you know, you're paying your agent $10,000 a year, which, which is the case in this situation. You know, you've been with them 14 years, you paid them $140,000. What are you really getting in return for that? And, um, you know, I can't make any promises in terms of pricing. It actually looks pretty good, Mr. Buyer, but what I can tell you that I would bring to the table is hunger and transparency, right? I'm starving, man. I just, re I just started with a new agency. Uh, I'm young, I got three kids, and I'm not going anywhere. I'm in this for the long haul. I got my house to feed, right? People depend on me. And um, I take all my clients seriously, you know, so I, I can't afford to be complacent. Um, and then also, so that's, that's just kind of weaving that in, right? That's example how I would work that into the conversation. But the other, th other thing to do, I told him, I said, hey, come out there with a very specific marketing plan. Make some calls before this meeting some, uh, to, to underwriters off the record. Just say, hey, have you seen this account? What's your feedback been? Talk to a wholesale broker who needs to go to the wholesale, you know, and then come out there with a very specific marketing plan that you could show this buyer, Ian, because he's obviously has some concern over transparency. And then what you tell him is like, keep this list. If you hire me, I can't guarantee the end result, but I can say we're going to work our butt off to get you the best deal. But secondly, I'm going to come back and show you what everyone said so you can hold me accountable. And if at the end of that, I let you down, you can always go back to your other guy. So... This hunger aspect is just critical, and I know I keep saying it, but it really, really is, especially if you're a younger producer or maybe you're opening a new territory or maybe you're from out of town or you, you're just kind of, you have the, the chips stacked against you. Use this hunger to your advantage. I've, I've personally used it, um, and I've seen others use it really, really well 
don't be afraid to use it. You also don't want to abuse it, right? You don't want to just make it all about that. You want to make it about the value that you bring, the ideas you have and all that. I'm not saying to discount that. I'm just saying don't forget to use hunger and that kind of personal element. Um, and one last thing on this is during the courting process, you have a really good opportunity to show this, which is why I'm a huge fan of the due diligence approach we talk about at the Max Revenue Show and in our producer playbook. Um, if you haven't bought that course, go check it out or check out our other videos. But um, when we talk about due diligence, it's really an opportunity for you to show the client value and how you work, right? And, and your hunger throughout the process. Um, and they start saying, well, man, my broker's never done that for me. Um, so uh, real quick example, personally, I have a, a large account I'm working on and uh, he's asked his broker for kind of an insurance grid, just a picture of all their policies and stuff where they're at. So I created it. I spent about an hour creating it, um, gave it to him in a research meeting and he was like, man, I've been asking this for three months, haven't got it, right? All those are little seeds that you plant. Okay, third thing let's talk about, setting goals um, and numbers, right? So um, Ian, uh, week, the previous week, I made 110 calls, 10 conversations, two meetings. That's awesome. He had a really good meeting with a $120,000, probably $150,000 revenue account, guys. That's in week number six. He set a meeting, had a really good meeting with a guy paying over a million dollars, right? And they're three hours away from where he lives. So don't be afraid to call upstream, right? But um, his goals, 50 calls a day, 1,000 calls for the month. He wants to set, I believe he said six meetings, which I think is awesome. I told him, here's the deal with the meetings, so, especially when you're newer. Don't beat yourself up over the meeting set. I've gone through droughts where I can't get a freaking meeting, right? I'm making a ton of calls, no meetings, no luck, no bueno. But I am more concerned as a mentor, and you should be as a producer with your activity because that's all you really truly can control. Yes, you can tweak how you say things and your scripting and your objection handling. You can control that to some extent, but especially when you're selling insurance and let's face it, people view it as a commodity. You're just going to run into people that are happy, right? That's going to happen. They got a broker 20 years or they're not leaving and you don't want to waste your time there anyways. So really hone in and judge yourself if you're going to, uh, I guess, yeah, evaluate yourself based on your activity and what are you inputting. And if you're a mentor, I would encourage you to do that as well because if you are doing the right activities and, and Ian is, you will just stumble into good things. I've seen it time and time again, and I know that people are like, oh man, I get so beat up making all these cold calls, 50 calls a day, I could be doing other stuff. Guys, it only takes three hours, maybe. If you're organized, I can do it in probably two and a half, 40, 40, 50 calls every day. And if you do that, give it 30 days, four or five business weeks of not missing a day, of hitting your numbers. See what happens. Keep track of the people who say, call me back later. Keep that warm list. Keep, keep your meeting list. Good things will happen. I, that's all I can say about that. Um, so, uh, the last thing let's talk about is splits, right? Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm saying, Hey, if you bring in as a younger producer, an older guy, he might want to cut of the action, right? You guys get 50% commission. He wants half of that. Now I never liked splitting business as a young guy building my book because and I still really don't. It's not because I'm selfish, not because I don't see value in others, but it's because I feel like then it's like, if I feel like I can do it myself, why necessarily split it with another producer? especially when you have an account exec and account manager that's kind of doing the admin side of things. I'm a big fan of learning how to do the business, right? Now, if you need someone to help you close it, that's one thing, right? And I would talk with a producer beforehand, an older guy, like, hey, I just really need your help closing it. I want you to kind of be that expert, but I don't want your help really, you know, no offense, but I don't really need your help throughout the year. Can I give you a cut year one, right? However you want to work that, that's on you. And but I would encourage you as a new producer, find a mentor who's willing to maybe in your office, who's willing to come out there and help you take a note cut. This might be hard to find because everyone's time is valuable, right? But but it, to, to split an account 50-50 for the life of it, just for some gray haired guy to come in there and show face once a year, man, that's just, that's a tough pill to swallow for me. So um, what I told Ian, I'm his mentor and I could have asked for a cut on these, like on this big deal uh, that he was in and last week. I said, hey Ian, here's the deal, man. Don't feel afraid to bring me in on these meetings, right? You can use some of my seniority on the construction practice layer here. You can use some of that seniority if you want. I'm happy to do that at no cost to you. Um, now, I'm trying to help him be successful, right? But I did say, hey, I said, if you got an account where you truly need me involved, like more than just a closing meeting, like it's going to be work throughout the year, I would ask for a cut. But we'll, we'll talk about that up front, right? And he was totally cool with that. But I, I could tell, you know, he's probably wondering, like, can I ask? Can I not? So my thing is just be transparent. 
have the conversations up front rather than after you help ask a guy for help. Because you might be surprised if you ask for help and then he's like, hey man, yeah, I get half of that deal. And now you just, you thought you were on a 50K account, now you only got a 25K account. So, hey, that's all I got for you this week. Um, I'm pumped for Ian, he's doing a great job. I'm pumped for all you guys watching too. Uh, if you were taking the time to watch this series, I hope that you are extracting value out of it and you're becoming a better producer and, and taking one step closer to achieving your goals, right? Because that's what we all want to do in this industry. So great, man. It's awesome. Uh, if, if you just put in the, the, the work, good things will happen. So, hey, check us out next week on week number eight for uh, Ian's journey. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't, go sure check out the producer playbook. You might find it valuable. Um, check us out on LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, um, you know, whatever kind of social media is we're, we're trying to be at and trying to help producers. All right, peace.